I mean, hopefully, you know, so, uh, you know, got, get, did get our guy at, um, at head coach. Uh, it has been multiply, multiply, multiply reported that now Dan Radakovich from Clemson, the AD, is coming over. Uh, he is, uh, that has been, I mean, pick your poison on who you want to listen to, whether that's um, Brett McMurphy, whether that's any of the guys from ESPN, whether that's Miami Herald, whether it's Sun Sentinel, whether that's um, 247, whether, I mean, on three sports, or, I mean, they're, pick your outlet. It has been reported and confirmed that Dan Radakovich has accepted the job, pen to paper, will be announced tomorrow, right? So now we went to Clemson, got them up off of their AD, appreciate that. Went to or well, went to Oregon first, got them up off of their head coach, appreciate that. And did it, you know, I mean, because <clears throat> when was the last time that Miami did something like that? Not a Kirby Holcutt from New Hampshire as, all, you know, athletic director. Or even a Blake James, you know, from wherever he came from, Maine or whatever. Bro, we went to Clemson. Clemson, the, I mean, pretty preeminent power of the ACC this last decade, right? Dan Radakovich came here, got his MBA. He worked here first and everything. Yo, Dan, we got years of demonstrated excellence in role. Come on down and let's do this. Okay, well, I just want to be sure that it was basically get the coach first because you have big boosters who are Columbus guys and the Columbus fraternity is is tight knit, you know, from Columbus High School. You know, like I said, you know, uh Crystal Ball and Mirabal went there and graduated the same year. Some of these other guys and boosters and everything also went there. And it's like I went to Cranbrook, it's a private school. I understand, you know, like you got that close knit community of uh alum from that one place, right? And so that was always gonna be the guy when we decided we're gonna move on from Manny Diaz. But Radic- so you get uh Crystal Ball and Radakovich basically said, okay, and it's the coach who had to approve the AD. But then the AD was like, well, I'm with you. Because Mike Ryan, also from Dan uh, Levitard show, um, reported that. And then he said, yep, yeah, in principle, it was done on Thursday of last week with Radakovich. Needed to, or he needed to see or wanted to see Crystal Ball officially announced, pen to paper, done deal. When he saw that it was done, then okay, cool. So, all right. That got done, boom, he should be getting announced tomorrow by all these reports. And again, we went to large places for sitting guys, you know, in role, AD, head coach. Let me get that. Thank you. That's what I'm talking about. And also you saw, and I said it a couple weeks ago, when this whole started, this whole thing started, Clemson already floated out there that they really like their deputy AD and he's ready for a leadership role and da 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 which to me, and I mean, is a clear signal. We know Radakovich is going. So before y'all even put any names out here or anything, we're going to start saying, hey, Bob Hayes over here, who's been in the building, he's ready for the big job. He's a superstar in this industry. We love him. We're going to support him. But he's ready for the big seat. And if the seat comes open, which we already kind of know that it comes open, then this would be the guy. And they that's probably, I don't, I don't know if his name is Bob Hayes or his name. But he's going to be promoted when it's official that Radakovich is leaving. But, you know, this process has a proper conclusion for me. And to everybody who kind of talked noise about it being uh, improper or a shit show or things like all of these journalists reported, that's bullshit. And it was clear that it was a coordinated PR effort by the board of trustee members who were on the outside looking in, trying to maintain their power. And say, okay, well, we're not in the decision-making process, so we're going to leak shit out, and to make it seem like, oh, there's no, uh, there's no clear thought, there's no process, there's 50 candidates, and nobody's getting notified, or nobody's getting callbacks, but they're calling, and meetings are getting canceled, and they're, they're, it's a, it's a whole mess. It's, it was never a mess. It would just never involve you. And if you see also, Mark, team of the year, O State just hired a new defensive coordinator. Am I right? Had Absolutely. not fired a defensive coordinator, right? But where's the national outrage of hiring somebody for a position that's already filled? You got that with Manny Diaz because these assholes leaked that we were, you know, or tried to leak the process to try to impugn the process. Miami did nothing wrong. Miami acted in a way that all kinds of other schools act. You see Lincoln Riley, right? Got hired up off of his good job. So you, you want to tell me that there was communication 
only in the moment that he left Norman, right? You know, but again, it speaks to me that if it's Miami, it's a problem. And you know what? Like I've always said, y'all don't got to like us. If we, if you want us to be the villain, then fuck it. We're the villains. Let's be jerks. Be mad about it. But now I got an AD with championship experience. Now I got a uh, head coach with championship experience from the time that he was at Miami and then also at Alabama with a passion for the University of Miami to move us forward. So USC installed an interim coach after Clay Hilton, Dante Johnson, Dante mm -hmm. Williams. But they they clearly stated that he was not going to that they were looking for a head coach. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, so they okay, didn't have so a the, head the coach scenarios. employed while they were dealing with Lincoln right. Riley. Now, okay, so the scenario at USC is not exactly analogous, but if you're talking about going, you know, after someone who's in a job, which was the other part of it. So, like, it's not only that we had a coach, but also you're trying to get a coach from another school. It's not a problem. LSU, they hired a sitting coach. And, again, removing the current sitting coach at their schools. But still, that was the other part of conversation with Miami as well. You're getting a coach from another team. and da, 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 da. LSU did that. USC did that. Other teams are going to do that. But it's not well, a problem. Well, I, I didn't have an issue with that. because well, you I'm not saying to you. you. I'm just saying people. I know. I know. But I didn't have an issue with that part of it because you would n most likely have to fall into a perfect situation for a quality coach to not have a job. Therefore, yeah. you're going to have to go after a coach if you're going to go after somebody of that ilk. Um, the issue I have, and I'm not pretending to be educated on this, but based on what I picked up here and there would be more or less not from that side of it, but from the side of it of how Manny Diaz was put out there for a, a period of a few days still being employed while they were clearly going after Cristobal. Why would like they just fire him? It'd be like that. Cost of doing business. If you didn't like it, you should have won the games. You know, And I said – before, if y'all can go back and check these videos, I did not expect Manny Diaz to make it to Halloween, right? So, and it was again a lot of these people who had a problem with how it how the end of his tenure was handled praised the fact that we did not fire him mid season at two and four should have been gone. Clearly, there's no reason to bring him back. Had a bye week then you could have installed the interim. You could have been for you could have done all those things then, right? But instead, what Blake James and a substandard administrator decided to do was the wrong choice. And now at the end, that's really Blake James's fault. And I get it, right? But you did not do the job. And again, I wish Manny would. I, I saw that he put up a statement on Twitter. I don't necessarily agree with it, but he has his feelings. He's him. I get it, right? Um, and again, I think that he can go somewhere else, maybe take a year off, maybe be a coordinator again, maybe be a head coach of a smaller team and then build his way back up to a power five job. I said that last week and I do believe that. It's not going to be next year. It might be, you know, a Lane Kiffin, Mario Cruz, well, not Mario Cruz ball, but like, well, yeah, Lane Kiffin and both of them. It was three or four years before they got another big time job at Ole Miss, which is, the, I mean, that's a that's a big job. That's an SEC job. Uh, and then Oregon, right? So it might be, we're here in 2021, so going to 2022 season. So it might be 2025, 26 in there before Manny Diaz gets another power five job, you know, and I, I wish him well, and, but it, again, the job performance was substandard long ago, long ago. And we kept him around despite that. And then you lose to this year's Florida state. You got to go, whether it's right then or whenever. And I get that. It's a little uncomfortable. I get that. It seems unsupportive of the person because you're looking for someone else to come take that job but you abdicated that position many times over my guy sorry that's the cost of doing business see ya uh, I'm still not understanding why they didn't just fire him at the end of the season and then go look for their coach uh, I'm not understanding why they continued him to just they, hang on they wanted to it, it, that was a little bit of a half measure um because there were, you know, multiple reports that were if Cristobal eventually decided to turn down this job, then they were going to go with Diaz into next season, which to me would have been the Clay Helton route of we should have fired him now, 
but we're going to bring him back for another year and hope magically that things are different and then end up firing him early into the next season because Clay Hill should have been gone last year or the year before. You know what I mean? Um, but, yeah, I mean, that just – and speaks to the point of that was a crisis of leadership. That was a lot of administrative stuff that was handled improperly. And, again, if you would have gotten rid of him when he really should have got – when he really earned being fired, right? then we're not having this conversation. But you have substandard leadership doing substandard work at that, and now we're having the conversation about, well, why didn't we fire him whenever we did? You know what I mean? Like, that's the fallout that comes from when you have somebody who, unfortunately, the job is too big for, both as a head coach and demonstratedly as well as the athletic director. 